game there are the officials. Brian Lewis along with Gerard Gauthier and Sweet Knox. And we're going to get a look at the goalie in a moment or two, I think. Right now, we have Mario Delorier of Bromont, Quebec, 1984 he is World Cup Equestrian Please Champion. He is over there in the box with President this week. Ron Corey, and also with his father, Mr. Laurent Baudouin. Billy Smith, 2.60. Steve Penny, 1.49. Is there anything more to say about Steve Penny? He's done it all, Danny. And you have to remember, though, he's had an excellent effort in front of him. The team has played some kind of defense. We were told that that was going to be Delorier's father, Mr. Baudouin, president of Bombardier. There's a shot by Potvin, knocked down. Walter clearing it on the right side, the center. Hotman handing it off to Gilbert back in his own zone. Here's Don, a good pass to Gilbert over the line. And he rattled that one off the leg of free. Here's Hotman taking a shot. And the flex is just wide. Brawling. Now here's Pearson getting to first shot. Big safe. Another shot. And Penny absolutely phenomenal in the early seconds of the hockey game. Right now, I think the Islander players are scratching their head. Al Arbor wondering what is going on here. We expected an Islander outburst, and we're getting it. Two excellent saves by goaltender Steve Penny as he's scrambling up, down, up with a pad, and finally smothers it for a face-off. Is that action? And that has to be terribly disheartening for the Islanders. Here is the... Flurry, and it's a furious and serious attack by the Islanders. Tough shot. Now the Islanders, it's Flatley out there. Flatley is taking a look, putting on the brakes against Mondu. Right out in front of Kazaka and shot. And Sutter Brent shot it wide. A blistering attack offensively for the Islanders. Icing called against Montreal, and the Canadians were hanging on the roof. Gary, four shots in 48 seconds. That's like the old days of the Flyers. You look back and say, come on, Bernie. Way to go, Bernie. Stop another one, Bernie. Well, it's interesting, Dick. You, you mentioned that. Now, Billy Smith did that in the Rangers series and the Washington series. Now, uh, from the other end, Smith can look at what Penny is doing uh, to the Islanders, what he was doing to the Rangers and the Capitals. It kind of gets disheartening. Now they line up for the face-off with the Islanders sending Morrill and Janssen in over the line. The Canadians getting the draw into the center ice area. Shut left but for Smith. And he was bumped by Pinelli. Flatley is tied up. Pinelli took a rather gentle tap from Shut. And Robinson is in there. And big Pinelli, 6'2", 197 out of Hamilton. He is back in uniform, and the Islanders miss the Canellian dedication and hard work in that first game. The number 27 is buzzing on this ship. Now it's Sutter clearing it out for Tonelli. He couldn't get it, and Ludwig played it back. Morrow is bodied there by Walter. Bosky giving it to Janssen. There's the shot. A big, juicy rebound. And a shot wide. After it, back at the line. Here's some back in along the board. Right out in front of Bosky. And he fanned on it. And it was poked to center by Robinson. It's been a, a withering attack so far by the Islanders. They have five shots on goal and good scoring opportunity. So there you see, two minutes and 13 seconds have gone by on the opening period. There's no score back to Potvin. He takes a shot. Potvin going in. Who's puck in from the net? 
That wicked drive by Potsdam didn't get to the goalie, but it came dangerously to the lip of the crease. Now is Chelios coming in, and he's belted there by Potsdam. And Gillies into the center ice area. Last one going out for Gillies. He and Chelios check Gillies. Potsdam tossing his body around. There's a shot. And the first shot and a good scoring opportunity for Montreal. It was nice. Look at the little fellow go. A weight differential of about 75 pounds. And even after Big Gilly. A very aggressive, a very brisk, a very interesting start to this hockey game. An interception there by Naslund. He couldn't shake off tough man. And now scoring, handing it off. Here's on the pop band for checking. Hunter in there, along with Shot and Smith. Islanders forced to get clear of that long, drifting, eye high shot by Chelio. There's Pearson bumped with some authority by Smith. Islanders on the right side. Wayne Sutter going in, faking shot, takes the shot, and he hit the outside of the goalpost. Smith shoots it through center down the ice. It goes after it is Boudreau and it is icing against the Canadians. Gary, you were right and you were wrong at the start. First of all, New Islander looked right. But Tonelli with Trache and Basse, wrong. He started with Gilbert. It'll happen. You, you, you can't rely on the coaches anymore. That's right. You? you better believe it. Here's the check that Chilios takes from Denny Potsdam. Boy, we had more hitting right there in that stretch than there was in the entire game pretty well Tuesday night. And there's Potvin. Tuesday's opening game was a delightful piece of hockey entertainment. The players stuck strictly to the execution of the game. There was none of that senseless fighting and brawling, which unfortunately all too often distracts so substantially from a good and exciting playoff game. So let us hope that that pattern will continue. But there are rumblings that this is going to be a more physical game. And already we have indication. But Gary, there's nothing wrong with good body check. Not at all, and that's the way the game was meant to be played. There's a lot of line juggling going on right now, trying to get the proper matchups. Both teams doing a little line juggling. Now here's Robinson, he missed it. And he got it back to Ludwig up on the left side. There's no score in the hockey game, and that puck goes bouncing over the board. Well, in this final series, or this conference final, of course, the coaches are quoted all over the place. Some very interesting quotes from Jacques Lemaire the last couple of days, principally to the effect that he doesn't particularly like coaching. He would much prefer teaching younger players than coaching in the pros. Now, I don't know just how far he's going to take his dislike when the season's over and contract talks come along. But boy, I tell you, it was flashing all over the newspapers here today. So we have 15 minutes and 29 seconds left in this the opening period. On the right side, Bourne and over skated it. Naslin has given her wrap in on the boards by Nystrom. Now Nyland bumped his man in, then he is taken gently in on the boards by Bourne. Here's Nystrom in over the line. It's cleared out, brought in on the offside. Tonight's game is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. The island is and the Canadians no score here at the Forum in Montreal. Tonelli is a bit fractious along with Hunter. Let's see. And Gauthier solicitously went in there and said, OK, it's very early. It's only the first period. Take it easy. I think Mark Hunter, he's not happy unless he's in a crowd, as we saw in the Quebec series. Well, this line here of Sutter, Flatley, and Tonelli were very instrumental in the fourth and fifth games in the Islander Ranger series and providing the victory for the Islanders. Now it is Potvin. Gets it to Deneen. Deneen did not play in the first game on Tuesday night. He's out there, number two, a very promising looking young hockey player. Now here's Brent Sutter in on the boards and the Canadians cleared on the left side. Down the ice it goes, and it would appear the Montreal for the third time in this period. And we've played just about five minutes and 13 seconds. Third time they've been called for ice day. 
Well, there's the always aggressive John Tonelli. What do they try to prove, Gary, in a situation where you had Tonelli and Hunter here a minute ago before the pucks even dropped? Here it is. Well, everybody knows the way Tonelli plays. You know, he's a, a rough, tough player along the boards. And if you're looking for a matchup against Tonelli, you have to get a player that is going to play exactly the same way. So put him uh, against Hunter. You know, that, that would be what Jacques Lemaire is trying to do. Look, at, let's have somebody that can match Tonelli hit for hit, grind it out in the corner so that Tonelli just doesn't get carried away and uplifts his hockey club. So the Islanders who have had by far the better scoring opportunities in this period have sort of settled down down the ice it goes. There's no icing and Captain Potman hands it off to Trottier. He passed it one way. Bossy was going the other. It's going to be icing against the New York Islanders. I noticed that a lot of people said they were shocked when the Canadians won that game three to nothing on Tuesday night. Now, I don't think that it should be categorized as a shock. Had they defeated the regular season Montreal Canadiens three to nothing, it would be a catastrophe along with a shock. But the Canadians have been playing well against Boston and Quebec. You don't buy that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I've had a chance to watch the first two periods in just about every series, you know, being out west, and uh, it was very impressive, you know. And again, Danny, here you go with the line shakeups again by L. Arbor. He's got Tonelli with Bossy and Troche, and then he took him off and put Bourne on the left side. So that line juggling continues to take place. And there's Robinson dropping in for Ludwig, coming out with Trombley, Carboneau, and Ganey. Now it's into the corner, dashing in there is Gainey. He sends it in front. And the Islanders are going to clear it. The Trottier over on the right side is gobbled up by Bossy. And he ripped that one off the leg of Ludwig. Into the corner. Carboneau is knocked to the ice. Robinson takes a look. On the left side for Gainey. No score first period. Gainey is tied up. Trottier and Bossy. They look much more prominent so far in the early stages of this game tonight than they did on Tuesday. And the Islanders have to have Trotsky and Bossy going. There's Gainey, and it's called on the offside. So a scoreless first period. They have played six minutes and 24 seconds. And there you see the time remaining in the first period, the 13.36. We have Walter on with Turnbull and Lafleur, Flatley, Brent Sutter, and Gilbert. Now Flatley is going to face off against Walter. And at center, Chelios clearing it in. And there is Morrow striding in there. He's being watched by Walter to the other side to Gilbert. Lafleur going in. He couldn't get it. Now let's see who gets it on this side. A solid body check. Turnbull handing it out against Flatley. On the board, Sutter. Now Lafleur looking for a loose puck. Left it there for Green. He snapped a shot three or four feet wide. Here's Chelios trying to center it. In behind the net, Johnson. Flatley will pick it up and get it back into the center ice area to Gilbert. He lost it. And the Canadians put Lafleur on the right side. A pass at the line. And Morrow tipped it away. There is Morrow. Johnson back to Morrow at center. Morrow strides up to that left side. Morrow has deceptive speed. He doesn't look to be going very fast, but he, he has great strides. Remember, there was another fellow who didn't look like he was going very fast. He had great strides. That was Gordy Howe. Now along the board. The Islanders trying to come up with that center around the net. He's down. There's the puck in the Canadian. Almost got out. Yes, they get out. Turnbull going down 3 on 1. Turnbull shot a rebound. They score! Mongo! You know, Gary, the other night the Islanders get caught on a 2 on 1 for the Canadian second goal. Here they get caught on a 3 on 1. Three on one, and you know, I question where Turnbull shot that puck from. You know, they juggle a little bit, and watch, just way up the top of the circle, but the rebound was there, and Johnson unable to handle Mondew coming in, 
Everybody is attracted by the shot and by by the play being made. You forget to turn around and look at the trailer. Canadians leading one to nothing. We'll have the announcement on the ball in a matter of seconds. Now the Islanders, led by Captain Potvin. He plays it up on the left side. Ludwig to Mondu. Giving it to Nylon. And the Canadians continue to get that first goal in these big games. Here's Maslow going in around the net. The angle was checked. The Islanders with Gillies and Gorey. They hit the line, and the Canadians breaking it up. There's Potvin over on this side. Deneen, he missed his man, Tonelli. Tonelli waves off Hunter. Hunter tried to get a piece of him. Now Boudelier at the line. Shot clearing it back to center. Boudelier handing it off to Trotskier. Here's Bossy in on his wrong wing. Bossy getting it back. Boudelier to Bossy. Hopped over his neck. And now clearing it to the line. Will it come out? No, the Islanders keep it in there. Bosky, top end it. And Hunter has it for Montreal. Starts away on that right wing with Smith. Shot is on the left side. Smith has it. Smith trying to get it in front. He does. And Smith cleared it to the right side. That is goaltender Smith. After Smith, the forward, dumped it in there. Over on the right side. Bosky hitting the line. And he thrilled a shot. Now, in front again, it comes. And it's Gainey fading to the far side with Tromblay and knocked it across the line. We're nearing the 10th minute mark into the opening period. Canadians are leading one to nothing. And a goal by Mondu from Turnbull at 7.46. Here's Tonelli digging in there. He's bodied by Green. Let's see who's going to come up with the puck. Both the quarters. Whistle stops the play. Mario you know, Trombley came in after the fact. So well, that's what <laughs> set off this little confrontation. Scored by number six, Pierre Modu. Avec l'aide numéro 27. Assisted so with the by score, number the Montreal 27. Canadians won, the New York Islanders nothing. We'll return in just a moment. A.D. Little Vain Cat and number 24, Chris Chelios. Au Canadien numéro 14, Mario Tremblay. Tonelli and Tremblay, first penalty handed out. Started along the board. Rick Green threw the first check at Tonelli on the play. Tonelli, oh, to the Canadians, number 14, Mario Tremblay. Two minutes each for roughing at nine minutes, 56 seconds. Nine minutes and 56 seconds into the opening period. Canelli and Tremblay are in the penalty box. Montreal leading one to nothing on the Mondu goals. Hot man up on the left side to Bourne. Bourne clearing it to the corner. Here's Caller number 28 going in, but Ludwig hands it off. And Chelius makes a look. This young man has been playing with a lot of confidence. There he is down on the line. Goes down, holds on to it. Kelly O. Should he get in there? Across the lip of the creek. And it's over the glass. Bob Cole, wherever you are, I hope you're enjoying your respite. Appreciation and congratulations for your splendid work on the Quebec series. And we'll be seeing Bob pretty soon. Chris Chelio set up or helped set up the goal. He fed the lead pass to Turnbull. Gary, 11 playoff games now for Montreal. They've scored the first goal in the game 10 times. Help. Absolutely. And you know the, the confidence that everybody gets on the bench when you have the lead. And ask anybody, it's a lot easier playing when you're ahead than you are behind. You know, after thinking about that goal again and seeing it the second time, Turnbull made a pretty good play by shooting it when he did. I thought he was just a stride over the blue line, but by the time he released it, it was at the top of the faceoff circle. And he has a pretty good shot. He gets a lot on it, and he's a big, imposing individual. And, of course, you have the two Canadians eager to pick up a rebound. Now the Islanders. Boudelier winds up with a shot. Covering up is Henny. There's a lot of talk after game one about Brian Frache and his 
lack of success in the face-off circle against Guy Carboneau. Uh, he was totally dominated by Carboneau in the first game. Here he gets a chance right here at close range. And from the standpoint of Bob Ganey's job and Mike Bossy, Bossy, who scored six goals in three games in the regular season against Montreal, had only one shot the other night. I think Al Arbor is the sly cat. He had a little clip in the paper about Carboneau eating up Brian Troche. And you know that Troche read that, and he will respond. He has tonight. He's been very effective for the Islanders. Now Robinson to Ludwig. And it is Carboneau on the right side, and he hit Ganey. Ganey in on the line. Backhand shot. Ganey sliding in heavily in the corner area. Knocked down by Pearsall, who gives it to Trottier, broken up by Ludwig. Pearsall to Bossy. Bossy takes his time. Could be offside here. There is the offside whistle. Well, there is Guy Carboneau, the Canadian Molson Cup winner this year here in Montreal for the three star selections. And you have to say that was a pretty deserving victory, Gary, because over the course of the year, he was uh, on balance to 80 games, the team's most consistent forward. And what impresses me about the way he's playing the playoffs, Dick, you know, a lot of guys shy away from blocking shots, but not this young man. He'll, he'll put his face in front of it if he has to, to, to stop the puck. But he covers Troche a lot different than the actual shadow. You know, he doesn't skate with him in the uh, in any of the zones. But when when the play is in the Montreal end of the rink, then he'll pay special attention. Where's Troche and pick him up? And we have another center out there about whom we'd like to speak in a moment or two. That is Goring. You know, in 1960, when he was 11 years of age, he was playing minor hockey in St. Boniface. He had a helmet. He's still wearing it. <laughs> It's not very sophisticated. There's a puck in front. Janssen working from the right side. Here's Janssen going in. They tip it, and they score! Gillies! They tipped it and went high. Finally, the light went on, and the Islanders have tied it. First Islander goal of the series. Don Cherry, wherever you are, you always talk about Gillies, the one that should be parked in front of the goal. Gary, that's where he was. Well, he did an excellent job of it, Dick, and the Canadians tried to get him out of there, but were unable to do that. Once Gillies gets that position, he'll stay there. Watch now. No way you're going to move that guy. Budged him, and then look at the three time. Everybody, again, Dick, is looking at the puck carrier. Nobody looked around. Perhaps there's somebody in a dangerous position, which happened to be Gillies. Fifth playoff goal of the year for Gillies, who scored only 12 in the regular season. And a Assisted by number three, Thomas Janssen, aging middle Catherine Vaillance, and number 91, Butch Goring. At 11 minutes, 58 seconds. Now let's have another look at it, where Gillies gets the position, and then the Canadian defenders skate away with it. You notice that four men were watching the puck carrier. They left Gillies alone, and he just redirected it past ten. Hamel blasts the shot away wide of the net. The score is tied at a goal. Puck then and to Trottier. Now loose puck picked up by Potvin. Potvin swings it in front. It goes to the far left wing. And there's a pass intended for a hunter. Janssen is beating him to it and chops it off the glass. It's kept in by shot into the corner. Potvin. And he clears it. It goes over the glass. So we have a 1-1 one -one tie. 725 left. First period. Seven minutes and 25 seconds the time left in the first period. Canadians with their defense out of your picture, they are up there. Greens and Ludwig, however, the Islanders get the draw and they work it on the right side. Flatly knocking it over for Bourne. And it's Walter inadvertently played it back into the corner. He wanted to get a soft pass back near the line. Now Lafleur couldn't get anywhere. Lafleur gets another shot at it, just gets rid of it on end. We've had a fair number of icings, most of which have been against the Canadians in this first period. Islanders and the Canadians tied at one, but the Islanders, 
I think, Francis, they've had the better of the play, don't you think, Gary? Well, of the seven shots they've had, they've had five excellent scoring chances. Guy Lafleur has now gone 22 straight games without a goal. It is rather incredible. He had a tremendous second period here the other night. Those of us who watched Guy through all of his trials and tribulations in that slump thought that it was the best stretch of hockey he's played in a long time. Now we... The last day, or in Tuesday night's game, Herbino dominated Trotch in the face-offs, and, and Dick, for the last couple of years, Trotch has always been used as a face-off man in his own end. Well, Al Arbor hasn't put him out there, and the reason why has been Carbono, because Carbono's been beating him to the draw. Now here they are again, set, see who wins this one. And it is Potvin and Pearson on the point for the Islanders. Penny securely tucked it for Hamel. It goes to the other side, Potvin swinging it into the crease area. And Gilbert was there. Potvin was thinking, perhaps I'll bank one in off Gilbert's skate. Well, the Canadians won the draw, Carbono, but the Islanders ended up controlling the puck. Here, here it is. Well, it's always interesting. You know, the, the skill involved in faceoff, it's not always brute strength. Sometimes the way you hold your stick, uh, timing it perfectly where you can use that quickness, and Carbono's just having an excellent time of it. Now Carbono is coming down on the left side to Gady. Gady going in. He hit the goal post. Gady hit the goal post. And that was an immaculate play all the way. Robinson head manning it through center to Carbono. And a beautiful pass on the left side to Gady. The only bad point about the entire thing as far as the Canadians were concerned that Gady hit the goal post. Score is tied at a goal, and they get a face-off at the Islanders' blue line. Well, Bob Ganey doesn't score very often, but he had a great chance right there, as Danny said, uh, Gary, all the way up the ice. I remember Larry Robinson used to throw those passes up to Jacques Lemaire. This time it went to Carbono, left side, then goal post. But you know what impressed me on the play? Ganey had his head up. He was aiming for that corner and tried to tuck it just inside the post and it wrapped off the goal post. This line has been playing against all the top lines in every series and they still haven't had a goal scored against in an even strength. Now that is remarkable. Not only are they stopping the opposition, but they're getting their share of goals also. And the long floating shot by Chelios was wide. Up on the right side, Dwayne Sutter can't get it out. He has to contend now with Mondu. And Janssen with Goring turning on one side. Now Goring is getting set, but the pass goes to Dwayne Sutter. Sutter is in over the line, and the Islanders are called on the offside. So it's a 1-1 tie here at the Montreal Forum. First period, game two of the series. 5.44 the time left, as you can see in the upper right-hand corner of your television set. Now Goring is waved out of there. And it's going to be Gillies who has scored the goal for the Islanders facing off against Hunter. Now Wayne Sutter over the other side to Gillies and it hopped over his stick. Gellios, the left wing pass too hard on that pass and it off the stick and shot. Shot body gently in there. Will Smith goes around the net. Staying with him was Wayne Sutter. Now Hunter went after Gillies. To the other side. Gillies trying to get it out over the line. Hunter has to take the shot, but the angle was very severe. Here come the Islanders. Wayne Sutter. Goring had to put on the brakes. And of course, when you put on the brakes, that is not a good pass. Sutter didn't lead Goring. But now, here's Slotke on the left side. The pass broken up at the line by McPhee. McPhee trying to shake off Haller. Gets it to Walter. And Walter dumped it delicately into the corner, and that's always the signal for players to change while the play goes on. That's what the Canadians have done. They have Ganey on there now with Trombley and Carbonell. They have done an outstanding checking job, and at times they have been a threat offensively. Now they're coming on a rush. Get over the line. Hard shot by Trombley over the glass off Pearson's stick. Well, Captain Dennis Potvin and the Islanders right there running into a pretty good job of forechecking, Gary, by the Canadians who were right on top of 
the New York team. Well, I think that adds uh, or answers the question that good forward checking will cause turnovers no matter how good the team is. And, uh, talking to the Islander coaching staff today, they're uh, maybe a little bit disappointed on the, the play of some of the Islanders that just haven't played up to their capabilities. And Potvin's name is on the near the top of that list, but with his ability, he can turn that around immediately. There's Flatley dashing in, and he was taken out of the play by Hamel. Morrow had that ricochet. It wasn't a hard shot. It changed direction. It went right to Penny. And there they see the players move around. Green, he's been a tremendous contributor to the Canadians' cause. Danny he can't complain about being tired after the long season. He played only seven games all year. First a broken wrist, and then he came back, played four, and broke a rib, came back and played the last three. It was like training camp for him. But still, he still got paid, though, didn't he? I guess so. You ought to know about contracts more than I do. You. Look who's here waiting to go on American television. Punch him like Hall of Famer. That's right. And Poncho should have been there long ago. And Poncho has great memories of this Montreal Forum. I remember one night he started five to and, right. and on the very first shift, Horton scored. But it backfired after that, didn't it, Dick? Should have changed right there. Got them on with 1-1, one, one, 10 seconds later. <laughs> So they line up for the face-off back to the right of Penny. And number 22, Steve Shutt. He has come through with some of the old Shutty and stuff in the playoffs, hasn't he? The rejuvenation of some of the older fellows. Yes. Robinson. Isn't Shutt. wonderful? What's the incentive? A new contract? Uh, he keeps scar careful, scoring goals like, uh, like that. He may be good trade bait for next year. Uh-huh. Well, certainly the stature of the Canadians and the entire team has grown enormously since the end of the schedule and the beginning of the playoffs. They have been the talk of the hockey world. They're leading in this series. One game, having won the first one now. Hunter coming down a lot of shot. Hunter trying to get it over to shot. And he didn't play it very delicately, did he? He hit the moral stick. On a two-on-one, you have to get that shot away. Get a good shot on that. Now Boudelina ahead to Flatley, and that's called on the offside. So the score with 3.22 left in the first period, tied at one. So there we have Carbonoids out there along with Trombley and Ganey, Bossy, Drossier, and Gilbert for the Islanders. Johnson getting it. Hot Van Rink wide pass to Bossy, who gets by one check and then was bodied by Trombley. But Bossy showed that he's a very sturdy individual. He may have been stopped in his progress, but he's kept on his feet. Now, this the goalie handing it off to Pot Van. Trottier is turning on the left side. Now Bossy is coming through center. Fades over on the wing and takes the pass. Bossy at the line. In it goes Gilbert shooting it. And Penny stopped it. And again, the Canadian cleared the rebound. Penny coming up. Carbono was the man who went to the ice. And Gilbert skated around to the line. It's going to be called, I think, interference. Well, Carboneau is definitely, he was arguing about the play. I don't know if he's going to get the penalty. No, it's going to be Rick Green that will get the penalty, Dan. Carboneau is arguing with referee Brian Lewis on the play. There seemed to be a question of mistaken identity for a moment or two. Carboneau went down, but there could have been an interference charge against Green before that. We'll have a look at it. Well, that, uh, that is what the call is going to be. Right now, referee Brian Lewis is talking to Captain Bob Ganey. And they seem to have gotten everything straightened out. Here would have been on 5, Rick Green, 2 minutes for obstruction. At 17 minutes, 24 seconds. All right, 
Let's see if we can pick penalty, it up behind the net. Rick Green, as uh, two Rick Green for really period. did interfere uh, 17 with Mike Bossy and draws a penalty. Seconds. So the first power play of the game belongs to the Islanders, and they have struggled in the power play. They are dead last of the four teams that are involved, scoring only four power play goals, Danny. It certainly is not one of the more productive facets of the Islanders play, but let's face it, they have the potential. They have the players. They could break loose any time. Let's see how the Canadians will defend against them here. We have Brent Sutter on there with Flatley and Tonelli. Janssen at one point. Hoffman at the other. They fight furiously for it. And the Canadians clearing it out to center. Gainey went after the Carbonell pass. Carbonell is in on the line. And he shot it into the corner. So we have Carbono and Gainey up front for Montreal. Robinson and Ludwig on defense. And they are in the center ice area. Away from five Islanders. They storm in there after shooting it in. Robinson can clear it up. It sucks. Now comes another shot. And the Canadians go after it in the corner area. Into the corner. Brent Sutter. Sutter taking a look. Back it goes to Janssen. Over the other side, let's see what's going to happen here. We had a mix-up. Flatley was in the crease area in front of Penny, and we're going to have a penalty. I don't know if it's going to go to Flatley or not. Well, he's going to get the gate, Danny. He was crowding Penny in the crease. In fact, back right into him. It was well inside it, and referee Lewis didn't hesitate at all and called Flatley on the play. So Pat Flatley, who is tied in the scoring lead with Mike Bossy with eight points, draws a penalty. Right, here's a, a good look at it as the Islanders trying to set up the power play. Now you see just at the bottom of your screen where Flatley will go in the crease and he's called on the interference. Islanders penalty. This Number will give eight, you a little Pat better look Flatley, at it. Moves two right in. He's not pushed in the crease by Robinson. Seconds. A minute and 52 seconds left in this the opening period. It has not been played with dispatch. It's dragged a bit. There's been a lot of stoppages. Not as crisply played as the first period, I don't think, of Tuesday. No, I agree with you, Danny. And, you know, a lot of plays are broken up between the two blue lines, and really that's where you disrupt the, the forward lines in both hockey clubs. Now, offside against the Islanders. We have Green with a minute and three seconds left in his penalty, and Flatley with 147. And Flatley will carry over eight seconds into the second period. You know, there's some people say that this is the purest score in the history of hockey, and I think when they talk about the purity of his scoring, they think of his attributes, his tremendous release, quick, accurate shot, and he seems to sense an opening his own. You're right, Danny, but he's going to earn his pay in this series having to play against the likes of Bob Ganey. And, you know, when you're a superstar like Bossy, you have to expect the close checking. Well, number 23 of Montreal, Bob Ganey, will certainly give him that. That'll be a real challenge for both players. That's the interesting thing about professional sports. Ganey has to be the stopper. Bossy has to try to get the goals against that stopper. Well, so far we have two goals in the first period, each team with one, and each team with a player in the penalty box. Here is Boutelier, over to Pearson, back to Boutelier, he can't reach it. Chelios to Carbonell, they're playing rather carefully with this alignment on the ice. Neither team, of course, likes to give up a goal with just over a minute to go. Here's Pearson. At his own line. Now we have one minute left in the period. Now Boudelier to Trottier to Pearson up on the right side. Trottier couldn't negotiate contact. Robinson speeds in there and it's called for icing against the New York Islanders. And Green will be back after 11 seconds. So that will give the Canadians a power play time of 36 seconds. With the proviso, of course, there are no further penalties. 
And nobody takes a penalty with less than a half minute to go. Well, they shouldn't unless it's to save a goal. The shots are nine to four in favor of the New York Islanders. And of those nine shots, we have the Islanders with five quick scoring chances. The Montreal Canadiens with two. So they've capitalized one goal and only two good scoring chances. And most of the Islanders' gilt edge scoring opportunities came in the first two and a half minutes. Now it is Smith facing off against Trottier. Ludwig is just down here in your left corner behind Smith. You can't see him. They'll try and draw it back to him. Let's see if they can get it back. Uh -uh. It's not done fairly. And they'll execute that operation again as we look at Potvin. You know, Potvin has had a strong first period, and he's also logged a lot of ice time. You notice how the Canadians were looking to draw that puck back to Ludwig. That's where Smith is going. But the Islanders get the draw. Morrow handing it off to Potvin through center ice. It goes to Born. He has enormous speed. Passes over to Trottier. His pass off a Canadian player. Now Montreal with the advantage with a half minute remaining in the opening period. They go on the power play led by Ludwig who lugs it in on the right side. Into the corner they go. Walter trying to come up with it to get it back to the point. And the Islanders with Keller sitting on the puck. They get a face off in their own zone. 18 seconds left. Now when called upon, Kalur has certainly done a job for the Islanders. The Ranger series came off when a few injuries forced Al Arbor to make a change and responded. Then he, the Islanders are a hard team to figure out. They're dead last in power plays, working at a 9.8% clip. In penalty killing, they're last again of the teams remaining, 76.9, but they just keep winning series after series. Canadians with Robinson, Robinson getting set, fired at, and it was low and wide. Chelios over to Robinson, hands it off to Maslin. Good play there by Potvin. Islanders can't clear it out. Smith is going to corral it with two seconds remaining. Potvin is putting in a lot of time out there in this first period, and he's been playing rather brilliantly the best we've seen him play in a long time and it's quite a relief for the New York Islanders because they were waiting for the big guy to get on rolling. You're looking at Turnbull who had positioned himself in front of the net trying to screen Billy Smith but the shot by Robinson was just wide. Why not pull your goalie here? I don't think you can get the face off and shoot at the length of the ice in two seconds. I think it has been scientifically tried and tested, and it's physically impossible from the point of view of consumption of time to get it down the ice in two seconds. Now Canadians get it to Chelios, and that's the end of the period. Canadians again opening the scoring at 7.46, Mondu from Turnbull and Chelios, then Gillies from Janssen and Goring. The score at the end of the first period, New York won, Montreal won. Stay with us for our first intermission. A furious activity by the Islanders. Well, you put your finger right on the, uh, the nail when you said, Danny, uh, that's the best I've seen the Islanders go. And we all expected that. Uh, they're a proud team, and you have to go to the offensive, make things happen, and did they ever? And the Canadians weathered the storm. You know, they got out of it not having any any goal scored against them and in fact took the lead. But uh, you heard Pat Fontaine talk about how big a goal that was by Clark Gillies. I, mean, I don't think the Islanders could afford to go down by two. It would have been uh, very difficult to come back from a two goal deficit. And now let us see what will happen here in the second period. The Canadians on the power play. But it will be for very brief duration. Now Flatley is out of the penalty box and the Islanders can't clear it out. It's off the first stick. On the left side, Trottier pumped it into the corner. Gilbert being tied up and he was knocked to the ice by Hamel who also went down. Lafleur giving it to Green on the right side to Walter. And Walter actually was guilty of a giveaway there. He just passed it. And Trotsky was there to accept it. 
with acknowledgement. Crosby is shot right on. And he squeezes that puck. That's a very dangerous thing. It's a very delicate uh, maneuver by the goalie. It certainly is. And uh, on that play, Danny, once the Canadians realized that the, the wrong matchups were out on the ice, they made a quick change and had the proper players come on. There you see another shot of it by Trottier into the pad of Penny. Did you notice that Gilbert, Gilbert on that uh, shot was heading right for the net with the possibility of there being a rebound? And that's something that coaches stress all the time. Second man, go for the net. Always anticipate a rebound. So the face-off to the right of Penny. He has been the colossus for the Canadians. He has been so huge for the Montreal team in the playoffs. Granted, they have had great performances from Robinson and Carbono. As a matter of fact, from the entire team executing their plays with proficiency as a unit. But above all, the Colossus, Penny. And there's nothing new on that, Gary. You've got to have the goal, Penny. Now Hunter tipped that one. And it's back into the Islanders zone. I think we need a goal here to open it up again. In the last 10 minutes or so of the first period, it was very tight. And that pattern is being followed here. Down the ice it goes. Boudelier is after it, and it's icing against the Canadians. Well, you notice that both teams, they don't fool around with a puck in their own end. You know, overhandling it uh, by the defenseman. As soon as it's on their stick, if there's nobody to pass it to, immediately dump it to the neutral zone. Talk about a bright future. Well, this Boudelier should see the thighs on this kid. They're like tree stumps. And I guess a lot of it has to do with his father getting involved in a training program, running up and down the hills of Nova Scotia. And you have to have those big, strong legs to be able to skate in this league. I think he was running as many as 15 miles a day. When I lived that part of the country, if I got over 50 miles a year, I ride that many on my golf cart. <laughs> a fine young talent, Boudelier. Now Ludwig takes a look. A pass over on the far side to Ganey on the right wing. Gobbled up. Trombley took the shot and it went off. Pasta and stick. Now the Islanders breaking out over the line into the center ice area. Gilbert up past the Bosque. Over for Kropke. And Robinson cleared it out over the line. Carbonell pass intercepted. They're passing it back and forth. A solid body check on Gilbert by Robinson. Now it is Ganey. Ganey over this side of Robinson going after it. Robinson still has it. He's forced back in there. Canadians trying to keep it in. And Popman takes over and swings the pass into the center ice area. Robinson back there to get it. The Canadians and the Islanders are making changes while the play goes on. And Ganey scoops up on that left side. But he doesn't get very far, the captain of the Canadians. And the Islanders. Clear it out. There's Green changed into the board by Goring. Here's Gillies winding up for the shot. And Kelly O's deflected it. <laughs> 17 minutes and 48 seconds. The time left. Second period. So far, this game has not been the fire wagon, the pulsating, end-to-end -end action type of hockey. It's tied at one. Boudelier clearing it in. Chelios gets it up on the left side to McPhee. McPhee a right wing pass to Lafleur. Lafleur is in over the line. He sent a pass in there. Walter couldn't pick it up. Down the ice it goes. Penny out of the net. Let's see what's going to happen here. Somebody has been injured. It's Pearson. Oh, that was a vicious check by Ryan Walder. He just leveled Pearson right into the boards. When you see hits like that, you're glad you're up here where it's very safe. Look at this for contact. saw an example of it right there. Could it be the shoulder, arm? It's always tough to try to guess 
in a situation like this. But you just hope it's not anything of a serious nature. And you know, Dick, if they lose him, it'll be a serious loss. Oh, granted, yes. granted, their power play hasn't been working, but he's one of the fellows who'll have to get it going because he moves the puck well, and he has that low shot, and you get a rebound on those shots from the point. You know, you look at the stat there. He was drafted 214th overall. It shows you you just never know. Here he is when the team wins four straight Stanley Cups. I suppose he hardly missed a shift other than because of injury. And he has been injured here in the early in the second period in this game. And the game is tied at a goal. Hot bad. Over on the other side to Janssen. Janssen coming down. He watched by Lafleur. There's a pass to Walter. Walter takes the shot. It was a screen shot. If you notice Billy Smith went way down there. And his eyes almost down. Put her so off the ice so he could pick it up. And he did. Now Chelios over on the far side to Green. Green playing it up on the left wing. Janssen, of course, hopping over the glass. Well, this was a day off for Montreal's other currently performing sports team, the Expos, and they are well represented here tonight. Team President John McHale, Bill Stoneman of double no-hit fame, now a member of the Expos front office, and field manager Bill Verdon in attendance tonight. John McHale has been quite a hockey fan for many years. Uh, he was in Detroit, became a close friend of Jack Adams and a great follower of the Red Wings when he was down there. They open a series with the Cardinals tomorrow afternoon. Face off outside the Islanders' line. Now Hamel giving it to Ludwig. A pass through center in on the right side. Here's Hunter struggling to get in there. And he was handled effectively by Boudelier. Here it is. Coming right in front of the shot. Back to Hunter. for a shot. And a big save by Smith. That was the best scoring opportunity of the period. We're going to have maybe penalties here to shut and to Flatley down the ice and certainly shut is going off will flatly go off so i think there's just going to be one penalty and that's the steve shut tonight's game is coming to you from the forum in montreal number 22 steve shut two minutes for high sticking at three minutes 37 seconds steve shut gave it the why only me reaction when the penalty was called but it is shut who is the lone occupant of the penalty box Hunter a minute just before that, Gary. Well, they had a good give and go there with Hunter and shut. Billy Smith able to cover up. And now the Islanders on the power play. They have Potbad, Johnson, Gilbert, Trottier, and Bossy. They try to clear it in on his block. Here's Carboneau coming down with Gainey. Carboneau taken up the play by Johnson. Trottier had a walk his stick. Now here's Carboneau on the right side. And he's pinned in on the board by Potvin. And then he got a glove into the facial area of Potvin. There's Carboneau again. Canadians handling themselves well in the first 35 seconds. And there's penalty killing. Now the Islanders on the left side. Robinson couldn't clear it out. Ludwig into the corner. Ludwig has it coming out on the line. Gives it to Carboneau and tipped it down the ice. Well, the Islanders have done nothing so far on the power play, Gary. They just can't generate uh, any kind of an attack. Uh, they're having trouble getting the puck over the Montreal blue line. Now they get it in over the line. Here's Tonelli dropping it back. Bossy playing it in there. He goes to Suttery, past the back, and it goes down the ice. After it is caught bad, we have 42 seconds left. In the penalty to shut, and the Islanders are standing at the line. Andu lost it finally, but he did his job in breaking up that old offensive thr thrust by the Islanders. Now, twisting and turning, Potvin in on the line, and a shot down the ice by Mondu. And we are down now to 15 seconds left in the penalty, and the Islanders will have to hustle to get a rush organized with some productivity. They shoot it in there, but they're not going to get many shots here, I don't think. Let's see. We have one second. Now Robinson has it, and the penalty has expired. Robinson shot it down the ice. Island
Islanders are after it, and that's icy against the Canadians. Well, Robinson, had he spotted Shutt just leading the box, might have been able to send him in on a breakaway. Canadians getting a big ovation. We've just been told that Stefan Persson won't come back for this game. He has what has been initially termed a mild shoulder separation. Dave Lajevin, another regular defenseman, hasn't been able to play in this series because of a shoulder injury suffered during the Washington series. So the Islanders, right at this particular moment, are hurting on defense. Two regulars out. And there are 14 minutes and 14 seconds left. Now Boudelier has shot. He was nowhere near the net. Wayne Sutter was bumped solidly by Hamel. Shut can't get out. Finally, he passes it over on an open wing. And Boudelier ripped it back in there for the Islanders. Green took a look at Sutter, who came in to bump him. That's Green. Now at the line. Over the line. Here's Smith off the shot. seems to be involved in big goals since these guys back in the lineup but let's watch as they break out it was a close play at the blue line not going offside now shut is going for the net let's see if he gets a piece of it and if it hits back on his skate or his thigh pad and goes in the net how about that for one bank over the goal line they in the right place at the right time one of the big surprises of the surprising Canadians, they return to scoring form and Steve Shutt in the playoffs. Dick, what makes this play possible is the not only the give and go, but Shutt, after he passes off to the wing, heads right for the net. Now, had he stopped there, play is over. You're looking for the deflection, and you get it. So the Canadians lead it to one. Here's the announcement. Canadians go, scored by number 22, Steve Shutt. A McLeggy Little Kays, assisted by number 15, Bobby Smith. Baby Middle Sight, and number 5, Rick Green. At 6 minutes, 18 seconds. 6 six minutes and 18 seconds into the second period, shut from Smith and Green. As Goring looks on, not too happy, of course, and that's a natural reaction as a result of a goal of that nature. And the Islanders, who trail in the series by a game, are behind two to one, and they go to the attack. Nystrom, he has not done too much in the series so far, but he's a very rugged individual. He's out there. Keller is on the left side, along with Bourne. Now there's Nystrom in the corner, took the body belt from Chelios. Walter against Keller and Lafleur has it. Lafleur just got it to the line, caught and drilled it back in there. The Islanders are on the move with the Canadians in possession with Chelios at center. Lafleur took Walter's pass. Lafleur knocked down by Cockman. Now there's a mix-up between Denise. And number 35, McPhee. McPhee now goes after Nystrom. Hamel in the corner gives it to Tremblay. He can't knock it out. And you can sense that the tempo of the game is picking up Denis when after McPhee. And Denis is going up. Now McPhee mocking the Islander rookie. He's a rookie too, of course. But he drew Deneen into that one, Gary, as the kid on the Islander defense lost his cool for just a minute. They had had quite a confrontation just leading up to when the penalty was called. At seven minutes, 39 seconds. Seven minutes and 39 seconds into the second period. Deneen of the Islanders off for charging. Canadians on the power play. Now here's Robinson intercepting going in. And Billy Smith comes up, and he challenged Robinson. And Smith coming up with a big save. Well, once 
Larry Robinson had wound up for that big slap shot. He was committed, but just to the side of the net was Smith all by himself. Had that pass slid over, Canadians would have a power play goal because Billy Smith was way out of position. Let's watch the giveaway by Potvin trying to go up the middle. There's Robinson. Look to the left of your screen, just cruising in was Smith. Robinson didn't see him. A minute and 39 seconds left in the penalty. Here's the third. Give it to the nose for a shot. And it went to the short side. Here's the Fleur. The Fleur into Naslin. Naslin twisting and turning. Playing it in for Smith. Here's Smith. Smith still with it. Smith takes a look back to the Fleur. He fakes the shot. Gives it to Smith. Smith on the board. Good box there by the Islanders. Robinson over to Smith. Back to the Fleur to Robinson. He shot it in there. And how did Smith keep that out? It was not by design. It was behind him, and I think it hit his leg. Quite a job by Chris Nyland, Gary. You are very familiar with the role that he was playing at that moment, as you see, directly in front of the net. Nyland and Potvin really hammering one another. Well, that gives you a good view of it. Nick, all the slugs and the sticks uh, that you get, it's all worth it when the puck goes across that goal line. But Robinson fired, uh, it looked like a knuckleball. You can see the label on it from out here, but Smith somehow got a piece of it and held on. When this game started, the Islanders had four shots in the first 48 seconds of the first period. Through the first 8.35 here in the second period, they've had just one shot. Canadians in this period have had eight. Eight to one, the shots to this point. And the time remaining in the penalty to Deneen, a minute and four seconds. Bondu, Walters, Shot Robinson, and Chelios, the alignment of the power play for Montreal. Out there is Brent Sutter, Janssen, Brockier. Here's Robinson trying to keep it in. He does. Robinson takes a look over it goes to Chelios. In for a shot back to Chelios. Chelios good to get in there. And a tremendous glove grab by a very alert Billy Smith in rapier-like fashion out came that hand and he got it. He that, might get a Danny, chance this to is, see it. This is normally when Billy Smith plays at his best when uh, he has to keep his team in there until they can regroup. But look at the quickness so he just reaches over that glove. He's out challenging the shooter and hangs on to it. But you know the Canadians are using more than just one particular player to get in front of Billy Smith. You know, who's ever out there and makes up his mind to get in front of them. They're, they're doing that and getting good position. 49 seconds left in the penalty. Here's Chelios and the Islanders. Intercepted that weak pass by Chelios. There's a long shot. And Chelios turning with Mondu. Robinson Turnbull. He goes to center to Mondu. Mondu is at the line. Here's Mondu stepping in there. And he finally lost it. Robinson can't keep it in. And in the penalty, we are down now to 18 seconds in the Canadians' final rush on this penalty. Here it goes to Turnbull trying to cut in front. And it's shot down the ice. And that'll do it for the offensive effort on the penalty for the Canadians because Janine is of the penalty box. Chelios burning with Walter and Lafleur along with McPhee, the four of them. They dump it in there. McPhee was spun around at the line and he went flying. Canadians are leading two to one in the second period. Trotsky is dashing down. Ludwig just got a piece of them. Here's Boudelier in the corner. McPhee is after him. Trotsky went flying over Ludwig. And the ice it goes, and it's going to be icing if the Islanders touch it. They do. Well, the Islanders kill the penalty, but Al Arbor and his team trail by one. 9.46 left, second period. And there you see the time left, 9.46. This is the second period. And the Canadians... On a goal by shot in the second period, leading 2-1.
Mondu for Montreal, Gillies for the Islanders in the first period. Shots on goal, 13 to 11 in front of the Canadians in that department. Now Boudelier trying to get away on the right side. He cleared it to Trottier, over for Tosti. He backhands it in there. There's Big Tonelli going in. Trottier helping out, getting it back to Morrow. And he chopped a sliding and rising shot that went way over the top of the net and over the glass. Last time I saw Ken Morrow take a shot from almost that exact same spot on a nice surface. It went in behind the goaltender, Glenn Handlin, and they won in overtime against the Rangers. Gary, as this game starts to settle in now, I think the, the key at this particular moment, the lack of a solid attack by the Islanders. They're just not getting the chances as they look at Tromley hacking away at Boudelier. Well, Jack, that's a good point. See, once the Islanders get it into Montreal end, they're not winning the one-on-one -on -one battles. I, I've never seen the Canadians take out the man and pin him. Don't let him back in the play. That last, about three minutes ago, uh, you know, it was, it was done to perfection. You just... The guy can't do anything. He's pinned against the board. Can't get a chance for a loose puck. Now Chelios. Green. Can't get it out. Goring coming back. And the pass is a little sharp. It got by Gillies. Here's Hunter cutting in on the right side. Plays it back in there. And Denis. Fresh from a stay in the penalty box. Passes it to Gillies. Now Potvin, who has spearheaded a lot of attacks for the Islanders. And he took the shot, but it was offside. You now they talk about Trache as we look at Brian right now on the bench. Trache, Bossy, you know, they seem to be the two names that are mentioned when you talk about the Islanders scoring goals. Boy, when you nullify those two fellas the way the Canadians have done, they, they just isn't anybody come along, Gary, to pick up the slack at all. You're absolutely right, and, and you know, you, you look at the two guys responsible for that is uh, Carboneau and Mario Tremblay, and Lemaire has asked them to do a job, and that's their concentration is directed at those two individuals. Now, Canadians on the right side. Mondo with Nelson for Brady Knuckle. He Look at the reaction of the fans in Montreal. Huh. And look at that reaction of the coach and the Islanders. The battle for the loose pucks again, won by the Canadian. Mondu, his speed hits Naslin. There's the shot. Gilbert was in pursuit, just couldn't catch up to Naslin. Tries to get him from behind, but Naslin beat Billy Smith. Again, it's the quickness of the Canadians. They they go for the loose puck, and they're able to come up with it and execute a play. That's about three two-on-ones that uh, have resulted in a scoring opportunity. The first goal, three-on-one, Canadians capitalize, and then a two-on-one. Goal scored by number 26, Matt Neslund. Avec l'aide numéro 6, c'est by number 6, Pierre Mondu, à 11 minutes 24 secondes, à 11 minutes 24 seconds. Now here come the Islanders. Grand Sutter around the net. Gilbert and Flatley are cruising around in front. Now Gilbert off the board, gets it in front. And Turnbull starts out for Montreal with the floor along with Hamel. Turnbull is up and up by Bourgeois. The Canadian supporters are infuriated. They thought there should have been an assessment of a minor penalty against Boudelier. Montreal leading 3-1 with 7.35 left in the second period. Tonelli over on the other side. Carbonell is belted at the line by Denis. Now Canadians going after it again on the right side. Top down and Tomlin go to the ice. So the Islanders have to be stung right now behind 3-1. to one. And they will accentuate that offense as they have never accentuated it previously in this game. But they're having trouble shaking off Canadian seconds. There's the shot fly. Canadians came close again. Brodkier digging into the center ice area. 
Robinson took a quick look over his shoulder trying to shake off the memories. He gets it to Ganey. Ganey, a rink-wide pass bobbled up by Carboneau. Carboneau in on the line. Carboneau trying to put it in front. Now all the players just stop there. And finally, the Islanders get possession. After a rocky start, Canadians have come on. Antonelli cutting in off the left side, but the touch is got Rebound. Barsky couldn't get it. Here's Tonelli. Back to the line to Morrow. Morrow clearing it in there. And Robinson with that big reach gets it for Montreal. He gives it to Shut with Smith and Hunter. In over the line. Shut shooting it there. And it was off Smith. Now here is Smith of Montreal. Crotchy's going to draw a penalty live on CBC. This is Stanley Cup 84. Brian Crotchy dumped a Canadian player deep in the Montreal zone. Might have been Craig Ludwig, not sure. And that's where the penalty was called. There it is right there beside the Montreal net. It is Ludwig. Now watch this. Really not, not a good penalty to take, Dick. And the, uh, talking to the coaches this morning, Crotchy uh, has taken about six penalties like that in the Ranger and Washington series. Perhaps frustration has set in. High sticking call on Brian Crotchy at 14.05. And the Canadians with Smith, Nylon, and Naslin. We have going on with Brent Sutter. Robinson is coming right on the rebound. Cleared away. And the Canadians almost made it four to one. Now they keep it in there. Here's Naslin going in. He takes the shot. At the line, Robinson clearing it in. Canadians are on the power play. Robinson going after it. It's back near the line. Goyne starts down. He stopped there by Nelson. Now Smith is in over the line. Here's Smith laying it back in off the boards. Hot fan losing it. Then he falls on it. And we have a minute and 22 seconds left in the penalty. This program is copyrighted and restricted for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, distribution, or exhibition in whole or in part. Though the express written consent of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation is strictly prohibited. You know, a lot of shots of Jacques Lemaire on the bench, but there was a fellow standing beside him, Danny, a minute ago, Jacques LaPerriere, who has to get a pretty good share of the credit for the way this team has performed because they talk about the defense that has improved so drastically over the last few weeks. And LaPerriere is the man in charge of the Canadian's defensive corps. Well, since the first, what, two minutes of the hockey game, the Canadians have just smothered the attack of the Islanders, and again, it's very difficult to get any kind of a line going in full force when as soon as you touch the puck, there's a white jersey right beside you, and that's exactly what happened. Islanders, two shots in this period. No dangerous scoring chances whatsoever. A statistical reflection to buffers your statement. There's a shot. The Islanders have 11 shots, and you know they had five after two and a half minutes. Now the Canadians, Chelios takes the shot. He's wide with it. Here's Hunter behind the net. It's shot. Shot getting set. Hands it off to Mondu. Back it goes to Green. There's the shot. Rebound. And Goring shoots it down the ice. And there are 48 seconds. The time remaining in the final day to drop the Montreal leading in the hockey game three to one. And they go to the attack led by McKee and Lafleur. <laughs> and the speed of Lafleur did not stand him in good stead. Well, I think maybe the inexperience of McPhee had something to do with it too. And he's going like that, Gary. Give it to him, well, I guess. You had that or dump it in the corner. He had the Jets going that time. You know, Danny and Deck, as we watch now, it's just a case of Canadians outworking the Islanders. I think we'll have to agree to that. They're just all over them. Every line, every player. And how often it, has somebody said that in the past four years, that somebody has outworked the Islanders in a playoff game? They're doing it exactly the way the Islanders did it so far, anyway. Now Robinson shoved in on the boards by Gilbert. Nimble maneuvers there by McPhee. Off his knees on his skate, made the pass, got it back. Now lost it to Keller, and Keller decided to go to the ice. 
Now Kelly Earl. Coming out slowly. Robinson moves up on the right wing. Ten seconds left in the penalty. Now, Keller knocked it back. Kelly Earl. Ahead to McPhee and over the line. And now we have the expiration of the penalty to Trottier. Let's see what's going on here. Might be a... No. In any event, we'll find out in a moment. Our Stanley Cup playoff action continues in just a moment. Penalty for adding too many men on the ice at 16 minutes, 9 seconds. Too many men on the ice for Montreal. If our coach was here, he'd say, don't take a picture of Jacques LeBaire because it's not his fault. You can't tell from that particular shot. But in any event, the Islanders, who have had no attack at all in the second period, now get a power play chance. 3.51 left. And a good point you made, Dick. Number 22, Mike Bossy, Boss a prolific goal scorer, has not had a shot in the game. Again, Ganey just doing an outstanding job checking the likes of Mike Bossy. It is Trottier with Bossy and Tonelli. The Canadians trying to clear it down the ice. Ludwig had to go over the glass. And we're down to 345 left. Now that Dick has disappeared, I'm going to move over once again and uh, get some words of wisdom right here from <laughs> Mr. Dornoff. Well, the only words of wisdom, Danny, is uh, the Islanders, if they're going to mount a, a comeback, this would be an opportune time to do that. Their specialty teams just have not been able to execute during the playoffs. But we all know that that certainly can change at any moment. And right here you see what checking will do on a team on the power play when they haven't got the opportunity to set up. They're offside, they're missing with passes. In other words, there's no cohesiveness in the attack. And again, that's exactly what the Canadians are doing all game is bump and grind. And you know, El Arbor, he doesn't even have hot man on the point on this power play trying to get some other people out there to get things going. Boudelier and Johnson are now working the power play. And Boudelier from behind the net on the left side he has Tonelli coming down and Bossy cuts over also to the left wing and they drill it in there and that nullifies the rush because the Boudelier's shot was high over the glass so things are not going well at this juncture in the game for the New York Islanders. Well they've tried everything Danny they've tried to carry it over the Canadians have uh, stood up at that blue line they've intercepted passes the poke check the puck they try to shoot it in it goes into the crowd things are just not bouncing right for the New York Islanders but to get things going it's a combination of dumping it in when both wingers are in full flight so that you can arrive at the corner with the Canadian defenseman and then at least you have a chance of coming up with a loose puck. And we are down to a minute and 27 seconds left in the penalty. Now in behind the net. Johnson fed it to the corner. It is Turnbull who is sitting out for too many men on the ice penalty against the Canadians. Now here come the Islanders. Pop Manazzoni drops it back to Canelli. Over on the other side, Johnson giving it to Boston. Getting it back, Papa shoots. He scores! Hot pass. That was beautifully set up. Hot man has an excellent shot when you get a bite. Has an excellent shot and got an opportunity to use it. But let's watch the Islanders now. They had three men over on the right side trying to break up that box. They did with a perfect pass, and Pot Van sliding in from his point man got to the top of the circle. Canadians really, Carbono was looking at the puck carrier. You know, instead of looking around at Podfan, and once Podfan spots that opening, he just moves in and used Carbono as a screen and, and passed, passed the goaltender. So the Islanders looking for some kind of a life, Danny, may have gotten him that power play goal. Here's the announcement. At number three, Thomas Janssen. At 17 minutes, seven seconds. At 17 minutes, seven seconds. So that's a big goal for the Islanders. That could be the catalyst. They look rather dispirited. They weren't doing too much when they got behind three to one, but they get that goal on the power play to make it uh, three to two, and we're down to 2.34 left in the second period. Now it's amazing how momentum can change from shift to shift or when a goal is scored or a good hit. Now we'll watch closely if that goal will inspire the Islanders to go to the offensive. 
or if the Canadians can regroup and say, all right, guys, we, we gave one up, let's get it back. Now here is Hamel. He shot it in. Baudelier, he's seen a lot of service out there for the Islanders. He takes a look and he swings the pass to Moore on the right side. There's a long lead pass. Green slapped it back. Kersar, if you just joined us, has a slight shoulder separation apparently, and he is out of action for the rest of this game, and that's a big loss for the Islanders. Now the Islanders are now down to five defensemen. That's what the Montreal Canadiens have employed in both games, going with five defense. And there's number five, and one of the five defensemen for the Canadiens, Green. Montreal three, New York two. Chelios to Robinson, he gave it away. And it was swept away from Boring by Mondo. There's the lead pass. Naslin going in there behind the net. And it is Icy called against the Canadians as they play down to two minutes remaining in the second period. And you know the Islanders, Dick and I indicated, and I don't know whether you agree or not, but I would think they have to come back and win this hockey game tonight. Otherwise, their chances of going on to win the series are minimal. There is uh, Naslin trying to get it. What their job would be then after tonight's game, should they lose it, they'd have to win four to five, and that's a big, big order. Very difficult to do, but remember, the next couple of games are in Nassau Coliseum, and the Islanders play very well there. But they, a lot of time left. <laughs> don't, don't turn off your TV set just now. <laughs> there are 22 minutes in regulation time, 20 for the third period, two minutes left here in the second. The Islanders, everybody up. They have Dwayne Sutter along with Goring and Gillies and Potvin and Johnson, but the Canadians get the draw and Chilios plays it to the board. Montreal trying to get it out. They lose it. Now into the corner, it's Smith. Jammed in there gently by Goring. Gillies trying to get loose against Chelyon. And so they'll get another face-off here in the Canadian zone with a minute and 46 seconds left. Interesting watching the sequence there as the Islanders in the offensive zone doing some good board checking. I, I was looking at the slot. It was well covered by Steve Shutt in case the Islanders got possession and dumped it in that area. Canadians were not about to give a good scoring chance up. Now we have Goring facing off against Smith. And the players moving all over the place before the puck is dropped. Do you think past the lines and do not execute that quickly enough that they pulled off the puck? Well, I don't know, Danny. I think once everybody's set, just drop it. And let the guys go at it, but well, the player does try to anticipate the drop because they have to get to their positions as quickly as possible. Now here's Popman taking the shot, knocked down by Robinson. Robinson cleared it to the line. Hunter can't get it up. Popman rolled it back in there. Gillies was upended by Chelios. A lot of pressure here by the Islanders. There's a loose puck in front of that. And Robinson is stopped. After clearing it, because I, the, before that, I think there was a puck glove to Robbins. It's interesting. The Islanders had a man in front. Pot Ben, on a couple occasions, was able to get the shot on net. Now, what Robinson will do, oh, there's the glove hand pass, is get in front of the man screening. Instead of getting him out of there, block the shot. In game one, Pot Ben must have blocked five or six shots, letting the man stand in front, and he would stop the puck before it got to the goaltender. So you notice on that play, Danny, that Trombley is trying to anticipate the draw because he wants to go to number four, Boudelier, at the point. It's back to Boudelier, but there was an infraction somewhere in that area of the circle to the right of Penny, so that's an operation that will be executed again. Back it goes to Boudelier going in for the shot, and he's wide with it. There's Trottier centering it to the side of that, and Penny is going to hold on. So there's a lot of pressure here and concentration of an all-out offensive effort by the Ivy. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Huffman, Huffman threw his stick at the linesman, didn't he? Did I catch that peripherally? 
Now Bodvin is really chewing at three knocks. Saying if it's a nice thing, blow the whistle. I didn't hear it. up his knee and they were going to have half back incurring a penalty look at it here now there you see they play with Smith he's got his hands or Potvin has his hands up in the air wondering what's going on the, the, the signal is icing and you saw Hunter coming in quite curiously to try to nullify that Deux minutes pour conduire non sportive. À 19 minutes 38 secondes. Highlanders penalty, number five, Denis Potvin. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. At 19 minutes 38 seconds. So Denny Potvin is off. Unsportsmanlike con conduct. And that, of course, is a big break for the Canadians because they were about to be called for icing. The faceoff would have gone down to the left of Penny. And the Islanders could continue to press. And the net result is Hartman picks up the final day. There's a pass and done. And Gady went flying over Smith. Over to Robinson. Robinson getting it to Maslin. Back to Robinson. Robinson on the board. We're down to four seconds. Back it goes to Maslin. There's a shot. And it hopped off Smith's stick. Now Billy Smith and Robinson, but Smith skates away. Players are off the bench. And let us hope that we'll not have something of the nature that will happen on Friday night. When are players going to realize that they are strangling a part of their livelihood by this type of action? Not particularly that it is, but anything that should break out and bring about fistic disorder. Let's keep it to hockey. And Very well that, said, sir. Very well said. Nonsense. Our Stanley Cup playoff excitement continues shortly with a second intermission. As a team, the Islanders have not played very well. They didn't play very well against the Rangers. Billy Smith bailed them out. They didn't play very well against the Washington Capitals. Again, Billy Smith came through. Perhaps they're digging the hole they might not be able to get out of. Well, let us see what unfolds here early in the third period. Potvin is in the penalty box with a minute and 25 seconds remaining as Robinson ignites the attack for the Canadians. Over it goes to Chalias. He whips the shot. And the rebound off the boards almost went to Naslin. Now here's Naslin getting set. He said it was a shot. And it actually turned out to be a pass that had the makings of a shot and went wide. Here is Smith. Smith dropping it back to Chelios. Chelios in for Smith. Smith over there. and that you miss the net and get a second chance. But what a play by Bobby Smith. Here's the setup, Chelios to Smith. Now watch as he fires a rink-wide pass. It glanced off the goal post against the backboard. But to his credit, Maslin stayed with it. The puck came right back to him. And you saw the dance. And then he go in the air after scoring the goal. And Smith was not in very good position on that one, Danny. Well, as you say, he was set up beautifully, and then the glorious opportunity was missed when he shot it wide. And you wouldn't think he'd have another opportunity. Then in delayed fashion, he came back and he fired it home. Here's another six. Madsen Mislund. And a clay in middle case, assisted by number 15, Bobby Smith. A middle Venkat and number 24, Chris Chelios. A cannot set second at 47 seconds. 47 seconds, the time of the power play goal. Montreal ahead by two again. There's Boston. 
and it almost went off Carbonell's stick. There's a shot by Denis, nowhere near the net. And a feathery pass, green to Carbonell. In over the line. Back it goes for Davey. We cut in front. And it was shot by Tromway. That was sort of a change of pace shot. But Smith had to watch it carefully. Now here's Bossy. Swinging it over on an open right wing because the Islanders are in the process of making changes while the play goes on. It's ripped in there by Green. And you can see the Canadian strategy unfolding here. They're sending their defense up the center, trying to keep that puck in their deep. They forecheck and shut almost got a break. Robinson intercepts. Robinson is in over the line. Tries to clear it in there. And Goring, who loves the skate, passes it to Boudelier, back to Goring to Boudelier. Over on this side, and Morrow has it for the Islanders. Danny, look at how many plays the Canadians break up between the two blue lines. That's where you generate your speed for a line. They're all over the Islanders between those blue lines. And you, you know, the Islanders had to make so many passes and actually didn't get anywhere. That's right. Now, here are the Islanders. Morrow, a spinorama shot, and it hit a leg. Not too much on that. Now on the board, Smith. Laying it on the left side, he picks it up himself. Good work by Smith. William moves over to Hunter. Back for Smith. He was checked by Morrow. Out Wayne Hunter. Goring picked up the Dwayne Sutter pass, cleared it in there. Robinson from the corner. Long pass down on the right side. Here's Nyland going in on goal. And a blistering shot wide. There's a weak shot. And it was tipped to the side by Smith. Now Canadians with Naslund trying to get through there. And Naslund is jammed in on the boards by Brent Sutter. On the left side, Paul Boudelier flicked it to center. Jellio gives it to Naslund, who lands it back into the Islanders' zone. 16 minutes and 10 seconds, the time left in regulation time. Flatly on the right wing. It's dropped back to Janssen. Canadians taking over. They can't clear it out. Flatly struggles to get into the corner area. Couldn't get it away from Chelios. Chelios trying to kick it ahead. And the Islanders finally get possession. Back it comes. He's up in front. And Green took it away from Brent Sutter. Now here's McPhee hopping in on that right side. It's a good thing he missed the top and check. Otherwise, he may have been up there on the third row of seats on the west side. Here's Lafleur shooting it in. Montreal pouring players off the bench. So are the Islanders. Bossy is up there. Tomlin. Stopping Trotsky, Gainey playing it back. Hamel on the other side to Ludwig. Trombley is bumped there by Trotsky. He flicked it in there, and the play is stopped. Well, this is Stanley Cup 84 on CBC. Canadian, the number 23, Bob Gainey, two minutes chacun for about cinq lignes. At uh, 4 minutes 52 seconds, the penalties to the Islanders, number 27, John Tonelli, to the Canadians, number 23, Bob Gainey, two minutes each for slashing at 4 minutes 52 seconds. Maybe now Bossio can uh, have a chance to get some free ice because he hasn't had it against Gainey. Now it is shot, playing at five. Ludwig lugs it in over the line. Coming in from the right side, Carbonell, he couldn't get it, but Shutter's going to get it. Plays it back in there, and it's dragged out over the line. Robinson ties up Cartier. Carbonell's coming back in. Carbonell rattled that one off to Dean's leg. And then he was bumped by Cartier. Captain Potvin getting away from Nasla. Potvin clearing it in there. Bossy couldn't get it. Robinson chopping it ahead to Carbonell over the line. Naslund crisscrosses. 
Now they crisscross again back to Maslin. Maslin around the net, still with it. He's sending it right in front. And the Canadians <laughs> fail to pick it up. What enormous speed and brilliant playmaking by Nasler. 53 seconds. The time left in the penalties. Canadians are leading the Islanders 4 to 2. You just joined us. We're in the third period with 13.52 left. There's Nasler working on the right side. Gillies puts the grab on him. Robinson takes over from Gillies. Robinson on the right side to Maslin. Now the Islanders are called on the offside. Tonight's game is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. Canadians four and the Islanders two. And Amel is back there in pursuit as nice come along with Kalur and Lafleur. Coming out, passes it off to Walter, back to Lafleur. Lafleur has to play it to Green into Walter. Walter is in over the line, trying to shake off four Islanders. Now Green has it, waits for Lafleur to get on side, and Lafleur over for Walter. Now here's Walter with it. He leads Lafleur in there toward the corner, back to Walter. Hotman and Ryan Walter mixing it up. And Nystrom. Gently gets it over to Potvin, but the Islanders having difficulty getting some skating room. Now they break in over the line. Nystrom ahead of goes to Denise. He hit the side of the net. And Amel was belted to the ice by Denise. He you wanted to find your hockey player. At least he's aggressive number two, Denise. You want to look at an interesting statistics. If you could get by the first minute of play when the Islanders outshot the Canadians 4 0, since then they have been outshot 20 to 8, including this one, the Naslam power play goal. You notice the left defense that he committed by taking the man out in front of the net, and that allowed Naslam to have a free shot of it. And you know, I have never seen such high intensity as the Canadians have right now. They're just just doing it every single line that goes out there. There's Deneen that Danny was talking about. He eliminates the check. Now here's Moroy's shot. Who's stuck in front of the net? It was kicked by Sutter. Another shot. Canadians finally clear it into the corner. Oh, that was a close call. With Brent Sutter right in there trying to fire it by Penny. Canadians with a two-goal margin, four to two. Chelios is back there. He's being pursued and bumped by Gilbert. Chelios takes his time. Shot tries to golf it out. Now Flatley is stopping it. There he whips the shot two feet wide. Johnson clearing it in. Pressure here by the Islanders. Flatley getting it back. Now a shot off Robinson State. Chelios to the other side. Johnson hops on it. Elias goes back in there. He would be satisfied to fall off the puck, and that's exactly what happened. Dick, I'd like to ask you, in this game tonight, how many three-on-twos or two-on-ones have the Canadians given up? Well, look back to the two games. How many have they given up? They have been one of the keys. That last sequence that Danny mentioned, how the Islanders came so close, and indeed they did. But in the final analysis, there was just no room. No, Every man is covered. There's no good scoring chances being allowed by the Montreal Canadiens. And in tonight's contest, the Canadians scored on a three-on-one, and they scored on a two-on-one. Very uncharacteristic of the New York Islanders to give to uh, give the game away. They don't beat themselves very often. And now the Islanders, everybody up. 12:01, the time left in regulation time. There's Ludwig against Tonelli. Trottier around the net. Getting it back to Deneen. There's the shot of rolls in front. Canadians are going to come up with it again, and they pass it ahead to Gainey. Donnelly comes in on the other side now. Pass over the way. Coming a big shot. And a marvelous play by Billy Smith on Carbonell. Good set up by the Canadians. In over the line comes Bossy. Bossy takes a look. Back to the line it goes. Deneen is shot and is blocked by Gainey. And there seems to be a Canadian there at all times to block shots, Gary. Pay the price for winning hockey games, Danny, and the Montreal Canadiens are paying that price. They're getting involved. They're doing everything that they can to win hockey games. 
Now here's Pinelli in there against Ludwig. Wayne Sutter comes up with it. Goring is in front of the net. However, the pass was deflected by Ludwig. Now Hamel coming up with it. Ahead it goes strongly over on this side. Here's Mondu cutting in on the wing. Mondu twisting and turning. He got rid of it. And he goes to the Canadian bench. And number 26, who has been a going concern, particularly in the playoffs for the Canadians, is out there. That is Naslin. Now it's back there tomorrow. A weak shot. Now here's Naslin. Out over the line. Plays it back to Robinson. Robinson is chased back there by Goring. Nyland on the right side is in over the line. Gives it off. And Naslin has it knocked away by Morrow. Canadians four, Islanders two. Montreal coming in with a shot by Naslin. It was way wide. The angle was just about impossible. Now Gillies. Giving it to Morrow up on the right side, and Trottier stumbles. Here's Trottier again at the line. Trying to keep it in there. Robinson will get clear of it. And the Canadians, well nigh impenetrable in a productive way for the Islanders. Canadians, when the Islanders get in there, they don't give them the opportunity to get these good shots on goal. Now Robinson takes over. Favorite clear there. Johnson is going in there. It is over top of the backhand shot. And again, Penny comes up and keeps that puck out of the net. And again, an ovation for Steve Penny and the Canadian Stanley Cup 84 resumes in just a moment. Well, the Canadians' luck continues. The Islanders get worse. Bob Bourne has had to leave the game. He's out now with a strained knee. They lost their defenseman, Pearson, with a shoulder injury. So there's two regulars that are sidelined in this hockey game. And now the Islanders, everybody up. Here is Flatley. Green is after him. Flatley prevails, and finally he lost to Hunter who shot it out. Left wing pass. Smith is in over the New York line. Here's Smith trying to center it. And Morrow racing back for the Islanders. Beats a beautiful pass to Sutter over on this side of Flatley. Flatley falls and again the Canadians are there to take over. And they carry it off the board down the ice. Billy Smith handing it off to Boudelier. Canadians shooting it. Here's Tom Lace shooting it. And he rocked one off the leg of Morrow. Canadians are going to get it again. Rombley, good move by Tom Lee. He's at end it. And the crowd reacting on that. They think there should be a penalty right in front of Nelson. And he fired it off the stick over the glass. So happiness reigns supreme at the forum. It's 4 2, Canadians. Canadians with a two-goal lead. They lead four to two. And the clock indicating in regulation time, 8.15 left. Deneen over to Potvin. Montreal will take over, and they clear it. And it's over the board. And a spectator gets a souvenir to the left of the Islanders. We are going to have Stanley Cup update right now. There has been a goal scored at the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton. The Oilers meeting the Minnesota North Stars in the first period. And the Oilers, who were big 7-1 winners in game one, take the lead. Yaroslav Puzar does the scoring. Tom Bopre is the goaltender. Great pass. Puzar from the edge of the crease. And the Oilers have the lead. Now here's Deneen. He has a return by Potvin. Back to Potvin. He hits Trottier at the line. He struggled to get in over the line. Tonelli dropping it back. And the Canadians starting out three on one. Tom Lee in over the line. Gives it to Katie. He fired it. And Potvin was in front of him. 
Now Park Banks doing it up on the right side. With the Islanders going all out offensively, they are going to become vulnerable, I would think, Gary, at some periods in the next seven and a half minutes. Now here's Trombley going back in there. The Islanders beneath around the net. Up on the wing it goes to Trot here with Bossy. It's dropped back to Potvin. Potvin goes to the line. A hunter hit Trottier. Here's Tonelli trying to shake off the bell. And Robinson takes over. Smith knocked Tonelli down. And Smith looked toward the referee. He thought there might have been a penalty. Off hunter in on the board behind the Islanders' net. Hunter trying to center it. Out in front, there's a shot by Shutt. And it doesn't take Shutt very long to get that shot away once the pass hits his stick. Green over the other side to him out to Smith. Smith hits the line. He has McPhee with him. Now Goring is breaking up. He has Green, Sutter with him. They crisscross at the line. Over it goes for Sutter. And it's behind him. Clark Gilly takes a shot. The shot is over there. And Dwayne Sutter just failed to corral it. Here's Popeye shooting it. Down goes Penny. And he holds it up. He's all standing. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. This is the reason for the latest standing ovation for Steve Bennett. Uh, when the Islanders have mounted a threat, which has not been very many times tonight, Steve Penny has come to the rescue. Now there's Chelios. Takes a look off the board that goes into the center ice area. And now exactly six minutes left in this game. Third period. Montreal leading by two. They have the score in their favor, four to two, and Nystrom coming in on the right side. Knocked to the ice by Ganey. And what a great performer Ganey has been in the playoffs all around. LaFleur fired it to the board, shot out, tough, and whipped it back in there. Now Taller in the corner, getting set. Taller trying to get into that spot area. And he sits on the puck and he gets a face off. Well, we saw a goal by Edmonton. There's been some confusion as to just who scored it, but it was an oiler. And they lead one nothing, and we get another one. Gary, you know these fellas. There's number nine. That's Glenn Anderson. I'll keep your eye on number 13, Ken Lindsman. It looks like he's the guy that deflects it in the net. And the Oilers are ahead of the North Stars two to nothing. Boy, it didn't take them long. They both scored them 9-1 in three and a half periods out there. There's Tim Raines, the Expos outfielder, who is one of the many members of the Expos organization looking out here tonight. Well, gentlemen, perhaps in the first game, the Canadians outworked, well, they did outwork the Islanders, but twice in a row, that is hard to believe, but it is happening. Here's Flatley. Flatley around the net, he centered it in front of Barkhand, dribbling shot, another shot, and it hit the side of the net. The angle was very severe. All right, quick, qu Flatley. quick question, Danny. When's the last time the Islanders had a clear shot? <laughs> Some First time. three minutes of the game? Golly. Well, the Pot Van goal is the last yeah. one that comes to mind. They're just bottling up the middle. They're not giving that middle area away to the New York Islanders because that's where a lot of goals are scored. The Lemire style oh. of hockey. There's a uh, rocket. He'd fit into the Lemire style of hockey, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I was going to say the Lemire style of hockey is not conducive to the opposition getting good shots. He took over that junior team last year, Long Gay, got them into the finals. He did it over in... Where was he in Switzerland? Discipline in a system is what it's all about, Danny. And if you can get 18 guys following a system and carrying it out, it works. 
I've seen it work with our hockey club, and I've seen it here in these first two games. Well, obviously, he's getting the cooperation of all the players. You can have the greatest ideas in the world unless the players go out there and execute them. Not much is going to happen. Excellent point. There's more over there the deflection just wide. Oh, the Islanders came within an eighth of a goalpost. Now, here's Nystrom in the corner. Back it goes, and it's deflected there by Walter. Down the ice it goes. Boutelier's back there, and the Canadians are called for icing. And relentlessly, the minutes move on, and we're down now to 446. Well, we are seeing vintage Larry Robinson, Gary, throughout the playoffs. You've had a pretty good look at him. The way he has been playing, and I can tell you it's been that way right from game one in Boston. Well, I remember Larry Robinson when we were going for our third cup, and he was very instrumental in, in taking, making sure that we wouldn't do that. Just a tower of strength behind the blue line. He's getting involved now. A gentleman, something that I haven't seen him do for the last three or four years. I mean, he makes contact, and he knocks you off the puck, and then when he gets the time, he can feather a pass to a streaking winger. Next game in this series will be Saturday at Long Island and then on Tuesday. Now Carbonell plays it to the other side. Here is Hamel. And he just gently rolled it into the center ice area and the Islanders who need two goals to get back in even terms. They move in there trying to get possession. Now Janssen clearing it in and the Canadians are starting out. Carbono coming down with Trombley. Carbono has it knocked off his stick, but the Canadians take over and they pound that puck back into the Islanders' zone. And you have the defense moving up there. Ludwig along with Hamel. Now they drop back. Trotsky over to Boston. There's a pass. Was out off the leg. A puck back. And the Islanders are being caught up in a tremendous web of frustration the way the Canadians are chucking them. Now here's Robinson laying it down on the right side. And three minutes and 45 seconds left in Montreal in possession after an attempted pass by the Islanders. Mondu clearing it in. Gillies coming out with Janssen. Pass goes to Dwayne Sutter in over the line. Oh, what a save on that one. Live on CBC, this is Stanley Cup 84. For the Islanders, Al Arbor is trying everything. This will be a respite for his team in a sense. They'll take some shots on the launch and and I don't know how valuable that type of strategy is at this particular juncture in the game. I don't think uh, strategy is involved at all, Danny. I, I think maybe to talk things over with the, the guys on the bench and say, look, at, let's have a little rest, and then we've got to give it all we have for the last three minutes and 28 seconds. The offense has not been there for the New York Islanders. Our Stanley Cup playoff action continues in a moment. a native of Moncton, it may be GF just outside. I want to get that geographically correct before people start to write to me. So for tonight, both GF and Moncton take credit for this fine young goalie, Roly Melanson. I think on the flight home tonight, the Islanders are unable to pull this one out. Dang, there'll be a lot of soul searching by the New York Islanders. You know, they, uh, they are just not playing like a four-time Stanley Cup championship team. Being outworked, outmuscled, they haven't won the one-on-one -on -one battles. They're not beating anybody in the corners. And it's very, very frustrating as a player. As soon as you touch the puck, you have somebody checking you. And the Canadians have been so persistent. And I think a lot has to do with the gentleman you see behind the bench. The line changes have been short. The Canadians are not overstaying their shifts. Consequently, they can apply that good pressure at all times. 
Mondu, Gilly, Chuck Naslin, Kaufman, and Naslin scoring in that order. And now we welcome those who have been watching the Edmonton, Minnesota game. 3.28 the time left here at the Forum of Montreal and the Canadians leading the Islanders 4 to 2. Montreal in the victory column. 59, Mondu and Gilly scoring in the first period. It was 1-1, then Shut and Naslin to give the Canadians a 3-1 lead. Hot fan near the end of the second period to make it 3-2. And Naslin after 47 seconds from Smith and Chelios. That's 47 seconds into the third period. The Islanders not getting many good chances. Let's see if Johnson can get it on the net. There's the shot. And so off of a Canadian defense, but this time Chelios blocked the shot, but Chelios has been injured. This young man has been outstanding for the Canadians, Gary. He's been a tower of strength and the poise that he's shown everybody with his play behind the blue line. He doesn't get flustered. You know, when a team puts the heat on, automatically a defenseman will fire that puck around the boards or give it away. That hasn't been the case with Chelios. He's remained calm and cool at all times. And Billy Smith is back in the net again. And the first stoppage of play, he replaced Malant, and that's just for a little time out, give the players a rest, and then ready for the onslaught. Well, here's from the faceoff, and let's watch the work of Chelios in front of the net. I think he'll stop a shot here. And the Islanders are jamming the front of the net. They're, they have to try to solve the riddle of Steve Penny. Well, we have mentioned almost ad nauseum tonight about the Islanders having very few scoring opportunities after the first two and a half minutes. I'm going to repeat it for the benefit of those who have been watching the Edmonton, Minnesota game. After two and a half minutes, the Islanders are shooting Montreal five to nothing. And of the five shots, four of them were guilty of scoring opportunities for the Islanders. Now here are the Islanders again. They flip it in front, and it's out over the line. But Gary, as you mentioned, aside from the goals by Gillies and Pockman, the Islanders have not had too much scoring for them offensively since early in the first period. If they're playing like a tight hockey club also, Danny. You notice how many pants bounce off the sticks. They're behind players in the skates. They just have, they just have not had any flow to their attack. And the reason why, they've, they've been harassed. Trotchet's had a very frustrating two games. Mike Bossy has not had a shot in the hockey game. Now look at uh, Robinson as he applies the stick to John Tonelli, clearing the front of the net so Penny can have a look at that puck. And we are down to two minutes and 50 seconds of time left in regulation time. The Islanders, if they have ever accentuated offense, they have to do it now. Now there's Nyland. He checked his man and Green clearing it out over the line. Naslund going after it. What a, an exciting young hockey player Naslund is. Number 26. And some people said he's too small, but he can mix it up with the big guy. Try and catch him, too. Now here's Green shooting it to the other side. They're starting to sing here at the Forum in Montreal. Benin is going in there. He's knocked off, followed by Hamel. Gilbert has it. Getting it back to Blackley, and he couldn't keep it in. Back goes Boudelier. And his clearing pass is over the glass, down to two minutes and one second. They started a singing a little earlier tonight, Danny, about 40 seconds earlier. As 2.01 remained with the Canadians with a two-goal advantage, Naslin has been exceptional. The ability to hang on and make plays in traffic. Got a great breakaway goal on a perfect feed from Mondu on a two-on-one break. That's been the downfall of the New York Islanders, giving three-on-one and two-on-one breaks. Naslin has a beautiful attitude, tremendously popular with the Canadian players. Now in there goes Charlie. He knocks Penny off balance. Here's Hudson with the shot. The puck is in front. There's a shot. And it went off Robinson. Penny was scrambling to get back in there. Here's Robinson. Taken in on the boards by Goring. McPhee is in there to help out. He was knocked to the ice by Gillies. 
They struggle at close quarters. Wayne Sutter behind the net. Sutter getting it back here. Johnson winding up. He fakes the shot. Johnson cutting it on that right side. They want to bring it back. And doing a dribbling shot to wet wide. Canadians hold on. They get a chance to it down the end. That's exactly the way the New York Islanders started the game. The same way they applied the pressure and had Montreal on the ropes. One minute left in the third period. Here's Wayne Sutter losing it there to Tomlin. Tomlin ahead to Carbonell. Hawkman. And they're beginning to stand here at the Forum in Montreal. Canadians about to take a two to nothing game lead in this series. They're all up on their feet. Hoffman ahead to Tonelli. Smith is coming out of the goal. Here's Tonelli. Tonelli settling it. Gamey has it. Cleared it out over the line. 27 seconds left. Canadians with it. Carbono over for Tomlin. And let's see, there's a penalty coming up. I think it's for Alboy. 21 seconds left. But at this stage, I would think it's rather academic. Now Bob Nystrom will get the call on the elbow. But the singing goes on by the fans here at the Forum. It's an exciting city in Montreal. Everybody's talking about the Montreal Canadiens, how they have played the game with great enthusiasm and high intensity. Let's go. Now Arbor working feverishly on the dump. Here they go. Bob Nystrom, 2 minutes for our Daniti Kud. And he is on man in the back. He's Canelli mixing it up with Gaines. Bob Nystrom, 2 minutes for Hellboy at 19 minutes, 39 seconds. 19, 15, 2 minutes for Hellboy. 5, 4, 3, 2, Oh, there is Smith going after, I think, that's 70. Why, in the name of goodness, as we said earlier, can the players not control themselves? You know, Gary, people say, oh, it's a highly contact sport, physical sport. They have to have a safety valve, a safety valve by foot. The international hockey is played without scenes like this. So is the Olympics. So why do we have to have these not very edifying scenes? Well, I can't understand what uh, Smith is all riled up about. Lewis, the referee in tonight's contest, is trying to separate them. Self-assurance. 
I think they're going to have to dig a lot deeper than what we've seen them execute in the two games here at the Forum. Well, it's amazing. And it continues to be the hockey story, certainly of the North American continent. The Montreal Canadiens rejuvenation is certain. Coming off, and we repeat it again, one of the worst seasons in the history of the club. And now they are up on the New York Islanders, four-time Stanley Cup champions. They are up on them two games to none. And as we pointed out earlier, it means the Islanders now, in order to keep their so-called dynasty going,